All right, so welcome everybody. Um, thanks for joining us for From Fear to Freedom. Whether you're live on the call or you're watching this in replay, we're really glad that you're with us. And we hope that what you see today and you hear will be helpful to you. So I'm gonna stop the share now for just a minute so you can see me. I'm Sherry Kaufman and I'm joined today with my good friends and fellow energy workers, Justin Harris and Rob Meyer Kuchen. And what we'll be doing during the hour is sharing with you proven tools that we've used for ourselves and with our clients and our students that you can use to calm down right now and live without being a prisoner to fear. And let's face it, we have a lot of invitations out there right now to do exactly that. We'd like to introduce ourselves before we get started. Justin Harris is going to be our first presenter, and so I'll let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit about what he does with clients and students. Justin? Hi, um, so I'm Justin Harris, and I have spent a lot of time uh, studying, training, and practicing uh, martial arts and um, traditional Eastern healing. Um, so really for me, martial arts is a tool to face and overcome one's fears and find a better way to, uh, to deal with life on one's own terms. Okay, thanks Justin. And I can tell you guys that Justin has helped me do that for many years. When I first worked with him, I did not realize how consumed with anger I was because I don't think of myself as an angry person. And I have learned in recent years for myself that anger sits on top of fear. So if you got anger going on, you got fear right underneath it. And so I can testify to what he can do to help with that. Rob Meyer Kuchen will be our second presenter. And I know he's going to be sharing about flower essences and what they can do for you, but he does a lot of different things. So Rob, would you like to talk about that? Sure. So I am a licensed massage therapist located in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And since we're doing this virtually, and that means that we have the opportunity that there will be people from all over the world seeing this, I have to, by obligation, show you on my hand that I'm from here. <laughs> anyway, I'm a level three trained Reiki practitioner and instructor. I'm a licensed sound therapist and a student of naturopathy, which is a long way of saying I'm studying to be a naturopathic doctor. I also have 20 plus years of experience in music and music education and have recently um, just settled into the holistic world of healing arts. And so those are some of the things that keep me busy, even in this uh, time of quarantine and pandemic, so. Great. And I can also tell you that just this last week, <laughs> um, as things can happen, being very synchronistic, I was struggling and Rob, just happened to send me a text about something. And then in our conversation, he was actually able to help me from a distance um, with the flower essences, which I didn't even know was possible. When he asked, hey, would you like me to do this? I was like, oh yeah, go for it. So both of these men have been phenomenally helpful to me in my personal life with various different things that they do. And sometimes they're my lifeline on the other end of the text. So thank you guys for that. So again, I'm Sherry Kaufman. <clears throat> I'm gonna be doing the third segment for you. Um, I am a former high school teacher, uh, years of teaching French, and I'm also trained and certified as a Reiki master teacher, a DNA theta healing practitioner instructor, and I work with essential oils in various therapies and crystals and meditation. I teach workshops that I design specifically to help people release the things that keep them stuck so that they can move into more empowered states of being. And I think that as we look at what we're facing in the world today, um, we all have to look at what we can do on a daily basis to keep ourselves um, moving in the right direction, but also to address the things that we're dealing with in the most optimal way. And so it's great to have a lot of different tools in your kit, people that you can reach out to, to help you doing that. During the three segments today, you're gonna to be receiving just a little taste from each of us of what we do. 
If something that one of us says or does or just who we are piques your interest, I hope that you'll uh, reach out and I'm going to share our contact info with you now. Here's our contact info. You may need to move your window around depending on where we're showing up. And <clears throat> as I said, there are going to be three segments. And in the first one, what Justin is going to be doing with you is going to require paper and something to write with. So you're going to want that if you don't have it already. And you may even want to take some notes when Rob is doing his segment. And after Rob does his segment, I'll come in and do mine. At the end of my segment, I'm going to take you through an activity that's going to leave you in a meditative state. And then Rob's going to come back and share a singing bowl meditation for us. And we're just going to float out on those frequencies. So we're not going to be back with you at the end of the singing bowl mm -hmm. meditation. So if you have any questions right now, um, either unmute yourself to ask those, or you can put them in the chat. And one of us can address that. And then I'll put this slide back up at the end so that you can see our contact info again if you didn't get it now or if you decide then that you would like to access it. We will be sending an email out to those of you who registered to be on the call live today with um, ways that you can work with us, okay? So I'm gonna stop the share now and I'm gonna turn it over to Justin. All right, <clears throat> so. The, act the activity I'm going to share with you is called fear setting. <clears throat> and this comes from a variety of sources. Um, my first exposure to it was through a Roman writer named Seneca, who was one of the Stoics. Um, and one of his uh, statements was to <clears throat> look at, uh, to, how do you put it, to dress in the rudest of clothes and eat nothing but the meanest or the lowest types of food and do that two days a month and ask yourself, is this what I fear? Um, and so where this goes is we're going to look at fear and how to look at it and overcome the, overcome the panic reaction we have to fear. Um, in martial arts, oftentimes uh, you will do practices, especially in the harder martial arts, where one gets hit. And in getting hit over and over, one suddenly realizes it's not, if it's not damaging, that hit you felt is just information. And that's what we really try to do here. We want to look at our fears and see what kind of information they try to impart to us. So. The best way I've ever found to do this outside of a martial arts class setting is to sit down and write down two or three things you might be afraid of. Uh, they can be uh, physical, mental, uh, physical or mental fears you've got. Put those fears down and then look at them. Uh, for instance, uh, there was a Korean karate master named Bong Suhan. And Master Bong um, told a story once that he was deathly afraid of tigers when he was a child. So his teacher uh, had him imagine that he was doing his forms and fighting tigers. And then he had him look at tigers and learn about tigers and study tigers until finally, Master Bong, as he grew up, was no longer af so afraid of tigers. And that's really what we're doing here. Um, I don't advocate going out and physically fighting tigers, bear in mind, um, but looking at what makes us afraid. What do I fear? Why do I fear it? What will happen if this fear comes to pass? How will I deal with it? Um, I think the best example I can give in my own life is when I started teaching martial arts professionally years ago, and what happened was 
I sat down with myself and I wrote down, okay, what's going to happen? And my mind is wonderfully uh, poetic <clears throat> in its in its fears. Uh, it was like, okay, I will make no money. I'll end up homeless and die lonely in a ditch. Uh, so I looked at that and I realized that was probably not the most uh, likely outcome. What happened was I started looking at it and you start making plans. Okay, if I make no money at my business, what do I do? What, what jobs do I get? That sort of thing. And over time, <clears throat> that helped me to let go of the, the really extreme scenarios that our minds can come up with when we encounter something we're afraid of. Uh, so that's one of the biggest things to do here is to look at, first off, if this bad thing that I fear happens, what will I do? Once you have that, once you have that, real, start looking further into why am I afraid of this? What is the real fear that I have? Um, of this thing that I see. Fear is often given a bum rap. <clears throat> fear is, is a, actually in many ways, especially if we look at it from the Chinese point of view, the, the, it is the yin part to courage. That fear is courage's other face. That without fear, we cannot be courageous. And so, when we start looking at our fears, writing them down, examining them, they are important windows into who and what we are. We need that kind of, of insight um, because without it, without it, we deny ourselves so much of what we need. Fear is oftentimes just an unrecognized need we have. So, hopefully you have thought, maybe thought of two or three things to write down. Are there any questions? I've got a question, Justin. Yes. So this last thing that you said was really intriguing to me, that fear is often just a recognized need we have. Do you, by any chance, have an example for that? Yes. <clears throat> um, in my own example I gave, um, the idea of how, how am I going to make money? How am I going to make a living? I'm doing this crazy thing uh, that, that shouldn't work by the conventional conventional standards I had. And so what I did was I looked at it and I had to had to realize that I was a, my fear was betraying a really large part of me that felt like there was no support that I could not depend on myself to support myself. And that was really the essence. That was the need I had until I was able to support myself, I wasn't able to move wholeheartedly into a space where I could actually be successful at what I was trying to do. So when so you anytime, say support yourself, do you mean emotionally? Partially? It's not just, it's not, no. Uh, well, honestly, for me, it was physical. Um, okay. Starting on the, the very base hierarchy of needs it's look at that fear what is it telling me how am i how am i interacting with myself with my with my world around me because as you know one of the other things i often teach in martial arts is that you don't have control over the people around you or much of the situation but you do have control over yourself and so by learning what it is I wanted, the support, I was able to take steps that helped me support myself um, rather than kind of unconsciously outsourcing that to others, be they employers, 
family members, et cetera. I had to be aware that I had this need. And if you don't take steps to plan on fulfilling this need, then it's always out of your hands and out of your hands is much scarier. It generates that fear and generates those stories of, okay, I'm gonna die alone in the ditch, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's, that's one of the things, when we look at fear, we have to be aware of the stories it makes us tell ourselves. So in that example, what I get is that the fear was actually an opportunity for personal empowerment. Yes, exactly. The, the biggest thing is we think of fear as something from, you know, a dark thing. And when we talk about, and you hear a lot, especially in healing um, and energy work about light. But one of the most important functions of light is to illuminate what's in darkness. It lets you see what's actually there and not live in fear of it, but understand it. Bringing it to the light so it can be addressed and accessed, yes. whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get that. Totally. Exactly. Great. So. Anyway, okay. it's, that, is the, uh, that is the process of fear setting. Try it out. Um, and if you have any questions, my contact information is in the, uh, is in the uh, resources that Sherry has put together. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was very, that was enlightening for me as much as I've heard you teach before. Okay, so next up is Rob. Well, hi everyone. So I want to talk with us um, a little bit about flower essences. And I really love the way that Justin was speaking about the, the fear and the emotion uh, behind uh, the experience that comes along with fear. And for just a minute, I want to talk about um, both the negative and positive sides of our emotions. Because just as Justin said, sometimes we need to learn from the emotion or the experience that we have. We have that really wonderful opportunity with all energetic modes of healing. Today I'm speaking specifically about flower essences. And I wanna give you just a tiny bit of background on flower essences. They were um, studied and first discovered by Dr. Edward Bach. He is an English um, homeopath and medical doctor in London in the 30s. And what he found was that everything has a vibration to it. And we're learning more and more about that as we're understanding quantum physics, that we're all just simply vibrating beings. And what he found was that the vibration of certain flowers or the capturing of the essence of those flowers could be used with his patients. See, Dr. Bach believed that the root of all dis-ease was emotion. And so he used the flower essences to treat the emotion of the patient, which is a really wonderful way of approaching medicine. But the positive side of things, not only can we address the negative side of things. So let's say, for example, the specific flower essence of mimulus is for addressing your fears, known fears, things that you know you're afraid of, which is wonderful for this time. I'm afraid of getting sick. I'm afraid of contracting the virus. But the wonderful thing that it has is that as you work through those emotions, it helps you to develop the emotion or the personal attribute of courage. So you have this really cool balancing. We talk a lot about um, letting go that which no longer serves you. Because I really fully believe that 
if you're face to face with a tiger, you need that fear. <laughs> you really should have that fear there. But if you think that just by leaving your house and going to your car, you may be attacked by a tiger and you live in the middle of the city, that's maybe an irrational um, expression of that fear. <laughs> And maybe there's a development of some courage that could grow from that. So we use these amazing little bottles of flower essences to help us out. So there are a couple of ways that we can use the flower essences. The first is in a spray. So this is a spray bottle of a mixture of several flower essences, five um, essences, in fact. Um, that we use when we're in uh, situations of stress or uh, trauma, acute situations. And so simply spraying it underneath your tongue is a very easy way of using it. You can even use it just to spray around your person. You can spray it on your clothing or on your pillow. You can put a drop or two of the mixture of the flower essences into something that you're drinking and sip that throughout the day. So that's how we would use the flower essences. Now I want to take just a moment and give you five flower essences that are perfect for the circumstances that we're currently dealing with in um, our current society with the public health crisis that we're in the midst of. First one is this one that I referenced earlier, Mimulus. Mimulus is a flower essence that is great for use when you have a fear that you know. So this isn't something that you're like, I'm so afraid, but I'm not sure what I'm afraid of. This is perfect when you know what you're afraid of. The second flower essence that would be very helpful right now is a flower essence called sweet chestnut. Sweet chestnut. And this is for fear for others. Not fear of others, but fear for others. So I'm so worried that my grandkids are going to get sick. I'm worried that my cousin's going to lose their job. Third one, larch. Larch. Larch is for when you're feeling like you don't have confidence. So, I feel like I'm strong enough and I have a good strong immune system, but I'm not strong enough to fight coronavirus if I get sick. Perfect for that. The fourth one is called Rock Rose. And I'll take a moment and put each of these in the chat during the next session. Um, or the next portion of the session. The next is rock rose, and this is for when you have a feeling of terror, like you're like the deer in the headlights and you're just sort of paralyzed by fear. The fifth one is crab apple. Dr. Bach called this the cleanser. So this is when you have fear or anxiety that everything is dirty. How many of us are sanitizing everything from head to toe? <laughs> this is perfect for that. And then last but not least, I'll give you two bonus essences to use. One is impatience, like the flower, impatience. This is perfect for the homeschooling parent who never thought they'd be a homeschooling parent because it helps us deal with keeping our heart center open, taking a deep breath before we speak, and keeping track of being patient, particularly with the ones we love. And then the last but not least, um, there, and there are, there are 30, uh, I want to get this right, 38 flower essences that were um, defined by Dr. Bach. Um, and so this is just tipping our toe into it. But the um, last one I want to give to you is this blend called Rescue Remedy. The bottle I had earlier is a spray of the same five um, flower essences. They are Impatience, Star of Bethlehem, Cherry Plum, rock rose and clematis and these are great for those acute moments of um, needing extra support when you've got fears and anxieties that are just very overwhelming <clears throat> so that is a very quick overview a very quick run through of flower essences if you have any questions go ahead and either unmute yourself or put them in the chat 
And I will put each of those in the chat so that you'll have the spelling um, of the ones that I referenced um, uh, just in my chat here. But, um, and if you have any other questions or would like to have a time to talk, um, I'm offering flower essence uh, consultations that can be done virtually. And that includes uh, a custom mix that I would send to you then for your use. So thank you. Yay, thanks Rob. So um, another thing that we can do, um, I'm trying to stop my video. Um, there I am. Another thing that we can do is we can send, for those of you that are watching this in replay and don't have access to the chat, Rob, let's remember to put that list of the flower essences in the uh, follow-up email. Awesome, we'll do. Um, yeah, and then when we, uh, we are recording this and um, I'm thinking that we may want to put that in comments as well later because I wasn't sure if we were saying mimulus or nimulus, and I wasn't sure how to spell it either. So, um, okay, so wow. <laughs> I love talking to my fellow uh, energy workers because, oh, limulus, I was totally wrong there. Okay, see, um, because it doesn't matter how many times I talk to them about the same topic, I always learn more, and I've been taking notes myself. I've heard Rob's presentation before. I've had conversations with Justin about facing fear before, but I still learn something every time. So, um, oh, it is mimulus. Okay, I was right. <laughs> oh boy, the things we're having with autocorrect today. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm back for segment three and um, following up with Justin's guiding you through or explaining a process that you can use to face your fears. And like he said, I loved what he said that as I sometimes refer to myself as a light worker, when the light comes in to shine, it's not really so much about uh, getting rid of the darkness as shining the light on what's there so that we can handle it. We can take care of it. The example that he gave from his own life of, you know, finding out what was it he really did need his fear showed him what his need was. And I love that because when I work with people in theta healing sessions, that's what we're doing. And then these flower essences that are so easy. I mean, there's so much help out there in nature to help us um, keep ourselves calm. And I really wish that I'd known about that impatience flower essence when I was teaching public high school. So anyway, I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of magic that I uh, found in my own life about three and a half years ago. I'm a big Harry Potter fan. You may or may not be. I've read all the books. I've seen all the movies. I own the movies. And one of my favorite scenes in the entire series is when um, Harry, the main character, is helping his fellow um, classmates learn how to create their own Patronus. The Patronus was a concept that J.K. Rowling, the author of the series, brought forth. Um, and a Patronus was something that was supposed to help guard against any danger. And it guarded, it was your most powerful defense that a wizard or a witch had against any danger. But it could only be created through the use of a happy memory. And this memory had to be really, really strong memory. It had to be really strong in the emotion that it brought, brought up. And it brings joy up from the heart. And once the, the young wizard held that energy of the joy from that memory, and then they cast their spell, Expecto Patronum, then this light being of an animal would come forth and protect them. Now, there are Latin teachers out there that would disagree with this from what I've read, but some people say one of the meanings of that Latin phrase, Expecto Patronum, is I await a protector. We want to face our fears. We don't run, want to run from them. We want to support our process with things like flower essences and other things that we can use. But one of the things that I have found through looking at this is that the energy that can be brought forth from a happy memory that can shift us into a frequency of joy is one of the greatest defenses we have. When we go into as Justin said, being paralyzed by fear, and I think, or maybe that was Rob, 
what happens is our thought processes start to shut down. We contract and we compact. And we even, you can look this up, have blood vessels that contract when we're extremely fearful and then the blood doesn't move through our body correctly and the oxygen doesn't get to where it needs to be. Paralyzed with fear means that we can't think, we can't reason, and we don't have access to our intuition, which I feel like is the best thing we have for facing whatever we're facing in life that's a challenge. So I love this concept that J.K. Rowling brought forth. And about three and a half years ago, early one morning, I had gotten up and my whole body felt heavy. I just didn't, I didn't have a plan for the day, so I didn't get up with, okay, I'm going to do this or that. I really felt uncertain of my own purpose. And I was sitting in a meditative state, contemplating, connecting to divine source, and I heard, it's just a feeling. You can choose another one. And I thought, okay, <laughs> let me consider what feeling I might have access to in this moment. And as I was doing that, I had a memory come forth. I remembered my Patronus memory. I remembered the memory, the scene, the exact moment in time that I had chosen, thinking that if I were a young student at Hogwarts, this would be my Patronus memory. And as I moved into that memory, other memories came forth. I saw myself as a young mother holding my youngest child and kissing him on the forehead right here. And my body started to become lighter. And then a new memory came forth of my firstborn, hearing his voice first thing in the morning on the baby monitor and going into his room one day to see him push himself up and a big beaming smile on his face that just filled the room with light and spontaneously saying to him, good morning, sunshine. And that became the way that I greeted him every morning. And as I moved into that memory, my body became lighter. And then it moved on to another memory and another. As I consciously went into that first memory that I had chosen as my Patronus, it moved me through a sequence of other memories that caused my energy to become lighter and more expansive. And I was able then to embrace possibility for the day. These memories that we pull up from our hearts create joy in our souls and they will lighten our spirits and our bodies. When we choose this memory, this intense happy memory, it gives us the power to face the most threatening of dangers. It gives us that expansiveness of possibility and it opens our mind. It moves us from the back of our brain forward into possibility. And it reconnects us to our intuition. We don't all have a magic wand, but we have the same power of thought. And we can access that power to change our environment through our happy memories. Because as we move into those happy memories and into joy, that becomes the lightest vibration, the most open vibration of possibility that we have. And we need that as we're making choices now. As you go through that written exercise, the written meditation that Justin shared, when you get to the part where you're saying, how will I deal with this? If your mind is open and your energy is open and expansive, you will see the possibility of more creative solutions. And so this is something that I use for myself and I share with my clients and my students. And so I'd like to take you through that now and then leave you at the end in that space of expansive energy. And from there, Rob's gonna pick up and take us through the singing bowl meditation, the sound bath, and um, we will be done then. So we won't be coming back on. Those of you that have registered for, the, for this call will be receiving a follow-up email and I will put the contact info back. So I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm gonna move to this. And so I'm going to invite you all now to just sit with your back straight but not stiff, your feet flat on the floor, your hands relaxed in your lap, and your eyes closed. And take a deep breath in and out. 
Center yourself in your heart space. Just allow all of your internal energy to gently collect around your heart, in the center of your chest, around that heart chakra area. Take another deep breath in and out and silently tell your body to relax. And now just breathing naturally, I'd like you to go into that heart space energy. Ask your heart to show you your Patronus memory. To bring up the memory for you that opens that space of joy pouring out from your heart. And as you see that memory, just move into that memory, really just immerse yourself in to that scene and to the emotion and the feeling and the joy, the happiness, maybe the laughter. And just notice how your body feels. As you continue to breathe naturally, notice how it feels like there's space opening up, lightening. Feel your energy expanding out. And if a new memory comes forward, just move into that one. Any happy memory that comes forward. And just breathe in that energy of joy, hope, freedom, whatever is coming forth. As you allow yourself to feel lighter and lighter.
May these words be a blessing to you. May the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Blessings and peace be to you. Namaste.